The history of threads dates back to ancient times. Horsehair, animal tendons. With their help, the ancient people did, guess what? The exact same things we do today. They make clothing, build houses, and forge tools. Basically, modern threads, having maintained their appearance, have undergone drastic changes. There are two aspects to consider. Today, they are made from different materials, and they are produced at specialized factories. One would think a woolen thread is such a simple thing, thin and smooth. But before becoming thin and smooth, its fibers are stretched out, combed, steamed, spun, meaning a few strands are twisted into one. The thread undergoes spinning, doubling, and steaming. But wait, apparently we should start over without the tricky terminology. We'll show you the full process of woolen thread manufacturing as well as glass, plastic, and waste material thread production and use. But we'll come back to that a bit later. Now, we have an unusual experiment in store for you. It is as follows. What happens if I have my hand stitched up? Don't worry, I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm going to have it stitched with sutures. At the end of any abdominal operation, a surgeon sews up a wound. For that, there are two types of sutures that are used, dissolvable and non-dissolvable ones. In other words, those that dissolve in the human body and those that remain. But what does this mysterious phrase convey to dissolve in a human body? Where do they go? What makes them disappear? Well, as they say in such cases, one should always start with oneself. That's why we'll make three stitches with each suture and a small knot, right? Yes, and we'll see how long it takes for them to dissolve. Uh-huh, yeah, that's right. Here we go. Here's my hand. It's being numb. So the process is underway. When I said three stitches with each suture, I messed up. Two dissolvable polyglecopron mono sutures are being sewed into my hand. They are usually used to sew up the integuments, tissues, and organs. Two more sutures, these greenish ones, are made of ethabon, a non-dissolvable suture material. A polyester thread, it is twisted, in other words, built up from interlaced fibers. Well, everything seems to be almost ready. Well, we're off to a good start, as this is only the beginning of our experiment. What happens next, what the result will be, only time will tell, right? And time should tell the following. Non-dissolvable threads, two upper stitches, will remain in the hand dissolvable ones, two lower stitches. They'll disappear. In general, I don't know how it will happen. According to the surgeon, it will take them from three to four weeks to dissolve. So we'll see. So how exactly is a simple thread made? This is where it starts, by thoroughly combing animal hair, the professional term for his top. The top is unwound and blended, or melange, as they say here. Do you remember the labels on your clothes? 50% wool, 50% acryl. The entire process of blending, melonging of wool or other materials takes place here. This is not a thread yet. Now it's more like a band. Then it is stretched out and becomes, take a guess, 10 times longer. No, 100 times longer than it was initially. 
It is incredible that the yarn can endure such strain, but if it is steamed, and one more professional term, greased with a special composition, a band can be stretched out almost to infinity. This is semi-finished. One strand of roving is divided in two and wound while controlling the strain into cops, as they call it here. A thread should not only be thin, but also quite long. That's why the following step is its extension. Three cops are merged into one thread. And that is a doubling and twisting machine. Here a future thread is doubled. This term means that several threads are wound into one reel, into parallels without twisting. And then the threads from different reels are finally entwined. By the way, there are about a hundred kinds of twisting techniques. So everything is ready. The threads are of required length and thickness, though they are wound too tight in this bobbin. They are rewound to release tension. Phew, that took some time. We need some rest. And believe it or not, the threads need it as well. They go to a steam chamber, kind of a sauna. There are under the influence of water vapors. The thread turns soft, fluffy, and light. In other words, it takes the shape of a thread we are all familiar with. Well then, we've seen the process of thread manufacturing. Now, we can wrap up the show. Wait a second, what did I say in the beginning of the show? Threads are used not just to make clothes, but also as construction material, not to mention data transmission channels. You can even make one yourself. Besides, with the help of thread, one can literally save a person's life. I'm not talking about something serious, not like my experiment that you saw earlier. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. At the start of our show, I asked to have my hand stitched in order to understand how dissolvable and non-dissolvable sutures work. So, right now, here is my photo and video diary. So, three days have passed since the stitches were applied. The inflammation is almost gone, and I've discussed with the doctors whether or not I should cover them. Finally, we decide to leave them exposed. I can't tell the difference between the stitches now. In general, they are alike. Though the doctor said at least a few weeks should pass before the result is visible when one suture dissolves completely and the others remain. So, we'll see what happens next. All right, and meanwhile, let's look at the threads from which door and window frames, panels, ground effects, tubes, sport equipment, cupels, swimming pools, and boats are made. This is a well-known material found practically everywhere. I'm talking, of course, about glass fiber plastic. Glass fiber plastic is a light composite material. It's corrosion resistant. That's why it's employed to make boats, for example. It withstands fluctuations of temperature from minus 60 to plus 80 degrees Celsius. One of the reasons it's suitable for construction. We compare two constructions of the same shape and of similar strength. One made from glass fiber plastic and the other one from steel. The first one will be nearly twice lighter than the latter. And the main advantage of this material is how cheap it is to produce. Let's look at words the term is made up of. Glass, fiber, plastic. It means that the material consists of two substances, glass and plastic. You must have thought, why would you lump everything together? What do threads have to do with it? The point 
is that the glass is turned into threads, these glass balls to be more precise. Why balls? First of all, this is a standardized shape. Secondly, they are better for transportation and speed up the process when on a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt brings the glass balls to a furnace. Remelting is the first step of the glass to thread transformation process. So, the temperature inside the furnace is higher than 1,300 degrees. The balls melt, turn into a thick liquid which, through gravity, trickles down into tiny holes. These are real glass threads. They are also greased by a substance right here. It is called a sizer, and they become strong and elastic. They are so elastic that they can be wound on a bobbin, like a simple sewing thread. These long fibers are called filaments. But we are only in the middle of the task at hand, so to speak. Later, this semi-finished item should turn into a final product. But not just a product, but several different products, up to four to be more precise. But in reality, there exists even more options. Here, they produce only four fiberglass products. Well then, if we soak the glass fibers in epoxy, for example, add some paint, press them, it will result in several strong and light construction items. By the way, that is exactly how hockey sticks are made. This process is similar to making reinforced concrete structures, but there are glass fibers instead of reinforcement, which are dipped into plastic instead of linking solution. And if we press the fibers covered with linking, we get these sheets. They are used, amongst other things, to produce boats and yachts. There is another product made from glass fiber plastic. The fibers are cut into tiny pieces. It is called glass wool. But this wool also contains plastic. All that goes under the press. As a result, we get a tray like this, very solid. And finally, the fourth product and it is made entirely from glass threads, not from glass fiber plastic. It is glass cloth. There are many ways to use it as it is moisture resistant, hard wearing, long lasting, and non-flammable. Just look, it suits but doesn't burn. As it is, at bottom, it's a glass fabric. We continue to explore the exciting world of threads. Coming up, threads as a means of communication, do-it-yourself threads, and threads for humans external and internal. Our exclusive experiment will continue. These threads literally changed our lives. Thanks to them, we have high-speed internet as well as the entire cellular communication network. Before we get to that, let's check my sutures and how things are working out for them. Just a reminder, I stitched my left hand to find out how dissolvable and non-dissolvable sutures work. Now, let's see the result. What's new? Almost two weeks passed since I've undergone this little surgery, and now we can see two things. First off, the sutures are fixed, even though they were exposed to water when I took a shower. They also rubbed against my clothes. Nevertheless, they seem like they have just been sewn in. Secondly, if you have a close look, you'll see that there is reddening where the dissolvable sutures were sewn in, while near the non-dissolvable ones, the skin is white and clear. 
It doesn't bother me, but I felt I needed to mention it. So, how do both types of medical sutures work? Everything is clear when it comes to non-dissolvable sutures. It is a material which, when the wound is fully healed, is removed by a surgeon. The dissolvable ones are a different story. In ancient times, they were made of not for the squeamish bits of a cow's intestines and treated in a very specific way. Yes, these threads were and are still called catgut. They basically dissolve inside the human body, or to put it differently, rot away. The sutures in my hand are the modern ones. They consist of copolymer glycolide, and they dissolve due to hydrolysis. No rotting through, just decomposition to water and carbon dioxide. However, the normal and the dissolvable sutures remain lodged in my hand. We'll see what happens next. Now, onto optical fibers. Just a short detour. The signal of a cell phone is only partly composed of radio waves. It reaches a radio tower, then is transmitted to a base station, and then to a special device, a transcoder, where it is transformed into light. In the form of light, the signal rushes to the next station. There, it turns to a radio signal once again and is transmitted to a subscriber. Cities, countries, and entire continents are linked with optic fiber threads. Dozens of thousands of kilometers of all the internet traffic is transmitted by these very threads. Fascinating, isn't it? What is optic fiber? These threads, light conductors, made from a very unusual kind of glass. This tube is a future light conductor. Moreover, it is made from ultra pure glass. When it is melted down, the silicon, the germanium, the mixture of gases are added. As a result, we have this workpiece. In fact, it is made up of two types of glass, one inside the other. The ultra pure is inside and the one with a higher refractory index is outside. And just another short detour, it'll be the last, I promise. How can light be transmitted over great distances through the light conductor? This happens thanks to a process called internal reflection. If we shine a light on a glass cylinder at a certain angle long enough, it will do the following. Light will reflect off the side. In science, it is called total internal reflection. When electromagnetic waves reflect off the boundary of two medium. In case of total internal reflection, the light almost fades out. And it means that it can be transmitted over very long distances and it means it is suitable for all communicating needs. Our workpiece of a future light conductor is placed into a furnace. It is an extraordinary 12 meter high construction. Let's have a look. Up top, the temperature is high. The workpiece is melted down and trickles under its own weight, turning into a thin and, what is important, flexible glass thread. The rate of extension influences the thickness of the thread. It's necessary that it should be a bit wider than a human hair, 125 microns approximately. The finished fiber is covered with a layer of protective polymer. The last thing to check, how well it conducts light. Optic fiber threads can transmit the signal almost in a flash, over thousands of kilometers. The signal won't get lost. It is resistant to interference. Optic fiber abilities haven't been fully explored yet. The experiments with different materials and different light wavelength are still being carried out. And who knows what else these threads are capable of. By the way, how are the sutures in my hand? No changes yet, though more than three weeks have already passed. Okay then, in the meantime, let's do this. Let's see how we can make perfect construction grade threads from 
waste material. We'll need plastic bottles. Yes, simple ones of any size, the kind we usually throw away. And this device, a bottle cutter. It is easy to make. You can find the instructions on the internet. And now we cut off the bottle's bottom, put the bottle into the cutter and just pull. Each bottle can turn into several meters of strong plastic thread. So what? What are they for, you may ask? If you are a practical and handy person, you'll see where I'm going with this. To bind an installation with it, for example, warm it with a hot air gun, and it will grip as if it had been glued. After a few tests in the studio, we decided to take a field trip. We are going to mend this fence. Usually when something like this needs repairs, people use nails. Now, once again, cut off the bottom, insert it into a bottle cutter, get several meters of plastic thread, Let's make it happen. This method of turning a plastic bottle into a thread, almost simultaneously invented by farmers all around the world, is surprisingly simple and effective. The threads are sturdy, strong, but loose. They are frost, heat, rain, and snow resistant. That's all for today. By the way, it's time to see how the suture experiment went. I've almost given up waiting for the result, but lo and behold. It happened, if I may say, a little unexpectedly. This episode is heading to post-production in several days. Me and the entire experiment crew, well, we weren't sure that we'll be able to finish the experiment as we were running out of time. But just as the surgeons had promised, four weeks after the operation, I couldn't see the lower suture, the dissolvable ones. They just vanished, only a small red stain, which according to the doctors will also go away at some point. All in all, I'm very happy that everything turned out the way that we and the doctors expected to happen. As it always happens in such cases, we didn't have enough time to tell you everything there is to know about threading. The topic is just way too broad, but you will get to see more thread-related experiments as we will be carrying more of them out on experiments.